sorry if you're not a Harry Potter fan because this is a lot of Harry Potter but Harry but in Harry Potter there are houses and I am a Hufflepuff so like if I went to Hogwarts I would be Hufflepuff <laughs> Hey everyone, my name is Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty. Welcome to episode 68 of the Love and Stitches podcast. Today is Tuesday, June 23rd, 2020, and it is a rainy and cloudy day here in uh, Texas, just outside of Dallas, and it's kind of nice for a change. It's a little bit chilly for us, like I think it's probably almost 80 degrees now, but it was like 70 this morning when I took my dog Toaster outside to use the bathroom. So that's pretty awesome. I am wearing a sweater right now, a hand-knit sweater I'll tell you about in just a second, but I am probably gonna take it off in a moment because while it's like a cold front, it's still a little too warm. Hold on, there we go. A little too warm to be wearing this here inside, but I am wearing my, I'm pu I have it pushed up, my Like a Cloud Cardigan by Hohi Locatelli. It is knit out of um, Shibui Yarns. Uh, it's a lace weight. I can't remember what it's called. I have my project um, on my Ravelry and my Ravelry project page is linked down below. But you hold together Sema and Silk Cloud, I believe. And you hold those together and knit this beautiful mohair. Oh my gosh, it's peeling pretty bad. There we go. Just got that pill off of there. But I love it, I wear it like every single day. It's even in the summer, it is my favorite cardigan. Um, so I have tons of finished objects today, more finished objects than I have whips. Um, so it's gonna be an interesting episode here, but I'm gonna just dive right into what I have finished. So the first thing is a pair of socks that you saw last week. I was nearly done with them. But now they are finished, finished, and they are blocked, washed and blocked. So these are, um, these are mustache yarn. The colorway is um, The Boy Who Lived, and then the contrast color is called Weasley Burrow. So what's so fun about these self-striping socks, as you can see that the stripes are not all the same, um, basically they are after each of the covers of the Harry Potter book series, and each stripe is like correlated to how long the book is. So it starts here, yes. This is the first book. So one, two, three, four, five is the longest book, six, seven, and then the eighth one is The Cursed Child. So I really love that. I think that is so cool. Um, I knit these for two like alongs. One is Kay, who is a crazy sock lady, her summer sock camp. And then the second one is um, one that I'm hosting on my Instagram, my personal Instagram, at all of this and that. And this is a Harry Potter summer reading challenge. So my entire life, like I guess adult life, because the book series finished when I was, ooh, I don't know, maybe I was actually in middle or high school. I can't remember. But the book series finished when I was like, a kid still at home and then ever since the book series finished I've always wanted to do a reread of all seven Harry Potter books during the summer because I've always had the summer off I've either been a student or a teacher so it's the perfect time to do that so I decided finally this was the summer that I was gonna do it and why not make it a challenge with more people? <laughs> so that's what I'm doing you can find all the details on my other Instagram um, and I'll link it below but it's perfect because I can knit, I can do a knit along, and I can do a read along, which is so much fun. So we're in the fourth week now, we're reading the fourth book, so that would be one, two, three, this one right here. So this is the longest book so far, and then we have two weeks to read the next one because it's long as well. So Goblet of Fire. And what's been really fun is Kent, my husband, and I have been watching 
the movies on Sunday night. So I'll start a book, basically on Sunday night, I'll start a book, read it like Sunday to the next Sunday, and then that night we'll, we'll watch the movie, and then I'll start the next book. It's been really fun. So I'm keeping up the momentum because I really wanna read through all those books this summer, and I've been listening to them and knitting on socks. So I have another sock project that's yet to be cast on that I'm planning to replace this pair of socks for my like morning, Harry Potter listening, knitting time. Okay, I've also finished a few other things. I have been working really hard on a new kind of addendum to my cozy patterns. So I have finished three cozies. So the first is a self-striping version of my classic can cozy. Um, and if you already own the classic can cozy, you will get this additional, it's gonna be an additional PDF because there are some things you have to do to manipulate the stripes in self-striping yarn in order for it to one, look like nice, and then two, get the I-cord to work out and everything like that. So that's gonna be coming on July 2nd. I will be adding that addendum to, is addendum the right word? I don't know, but I will be adding that to the classic Can Cozy pattern. So I am getting this tested. So I have um, some testers already lined up ready to go and they are gonna get started on this tomorrow. So that should be um, a nice pattern, you know, should be tested, everything ready and good. So I wanted to hurry up and get these done. So I've been working on this over the last week. I also knit, had to do all of the versions. So I've also got my bottle cozy and as you can see, self-striping. So again, if you have the bottle cozy, you will get the, um, the additional PDF that includes self-striping instructions. Oh, I didn't talk about the yarn. So this is, I need to create project pages for this. Vesperly things or knitterly things? No, knitterly things, Vesper sock yarn. And I can't remember what this color is called, like rainbow sunset or something like that. And then this one is Malia made it. This is, um, I believe it's called Romilda Vane's Box of Chocolates. We did a collaboration on this one, and so I had some leftover. And then the last one is a pattern that has not come out yet. This is the Skinny Can Cozy. And um, it hasn't come out yet, it's coming out on July 2nd, and the self-striping version will already be included. Um, but I had to knit up a self-striping version of that as well. So this is also Malia Made It get my hair off of there. And this is her color Disney Princess Parade. I've made socks and, and a yarn cozy and a mini yarn cozy, maybe two mini yarn cozies and, and this out of that one ball. It just It's like the colorway that keeps on giving. I love this color so much. So that's what I have been working on mostly over the last week is finishing up all of these cozies. So that's been a lot of fun. That's why I have mostly finished objects this week and not a lot of whips because I was working on that because I wanted it to come out in time for the skinny, skinny Can Cozy. So here's the, here's the regular Skinny Can Cozy. It's got um, sporty stripes, we'll call it, um, here and here. And of course I've picked a variegated yarn, but if you do solids, it looks very sporty. Like you can pick team colors, it's a lot of fun. So there's the two versions next to each other, self-striping, and then the like intentionally placed sporty stripes. I'll talk more about this in a little bit. So those are all of my finished objects. Honestly, that's like all of the knitting that, that I did this week. Um, okay, no, that's not true. So let me go into whips and I will explain further. Okay, let's first get out of the way something that I did not knit on at all, <laughs> like at all at all, and it's a shame, but it's my Lilium. And this is a cute little cotton t-shirt. I'm using a cotton wool yarn. Um, I hope that didn't, hold on. Let me adjust this because I don't want this to make any crazy noises. Okay, hopefully that's better. Maybe it didn't do anything at all. Um, but my Lilium is out of Gritty Knits Darlin Wool Cotton, 50% wool, 50% cotton in the colorway Josephine. And I have got to make it a priority to work on this this week. I've just been doing a lot of like design and other stuff that's been more, you know, timely. I need to get it done. So I haven't worked on Lilium. But it's in the perfect spot to just take along. So I really need to. See, look, there's my marker. Haven't even moved it because 
I didn't do anything. But this is a pattern by Megan Nodecker, who is Pippin Pin, and it is really sweet and really cute, and I know I'm gonna wear it when I get it done. So I need to get back to that, but no work on that this week. Um, I So the re other reason, besides finishing those cozies, is I have been knitting on some socks. I've actually almost finished a sock I'm on the toe right now, but I cannot show it to you yet but trust me it's coming soon um, but i am planning to start another sock so i wanted to show you guys that and this is going to replace my harry potter sock so i've got a mini yarn cozy on here this is actually more than 50 grams um, which is why you can see it's like barely fitting in there um, but i have I was cleaning up my yarn room this weekend and I came across these two leftovers from a shawl that I crocheted earlier this year um, and they are both Harry Potter colors. So one of these, I think this one came from um, my advent calendar two years ago and this one came from the advent calendar in 2019. So I get the um, Harry Potter advent calendar from Dragon Horde Yarn and Yarn Cafe Creations and it's 24 mini skeins and then one full skein. So these are the full skeins from the past two years. And since I am a Hufflepuff, sorry if you're not a Harry Potter fan because this is a lot of Harry Potter, but, Harry, but in Harry Potter there are houses and I I'm a Hufflepuff, so like if I went to Hogwarts, I would be Hufflepuff. <laughs> anyway, I think what I'm gonna try is, I already used these two together in a pattern and they looked good, so I might try to use these two together to knit a pair of socks. I'm going to do this with helical knitting and just see what happens. I have no idea. It might be terrible, I really don't know. It might not look good together, but it also just might be like too annoying, so we'll see. But that's my plan for a future cast on giving you that information because I don't have many whips to talk about. Also, because I can't show you the socks that I am knitting on, I thought I would bring in another design. So I have been working on crochet versions of my knit yarn cozies. They are not finished yet, um, but I thought I would show them to you. So here is one, this is actually DK weight, um, maybe bordering on worsted weight, it's Madeline Tosh DK. Um, so this is a crocheted version of the Yarn Cozy. Inside here is another skein of DK Weight. And I'm trying to decide what to do with it. I don't know if I want to have some decreasing so that this will kind of come over the top. Like my, wait, I have several. Here we go. So like here's my Knit Yarn Cozy. And you can see that it just ever so slightly comes over the top. So I'm trying to decide, <laughs> Tozer just made a really loud noise. I'm trying to decide if I want to do that with the crocheted versions. The other thing I'm trying to decide is should I put like a fun edging on here or just leave it normal. Um, and then also I need to create some more versions of these because I just think that makes the pattern super versatile. So I have already tried like a, a ribbing and I'm going to try that again and see how it looks. So that is the DK slash maybe worsted. And then I've also been doing a fingering weight version. Now I know a lot of crocheters don't really like working with fingering weight, but I love it. I think crocheting with fingering weight is just, it makes the best fabric. It is so, so delicate and beautiful. And I just think it's a great way to use yummy yarns, you know? These yarns that are hand dyed, they are more expensive. And so it's kind of nice when a project takes a little, a little bit longer. But of course, crochet is so fast compared to knitting. So this is my crocheted, um, I guess like, I haven't decided what to name it, like crochet yarn cozy light, I don't know. We'll see. Um, these are not gonna come for a couple of weeks, but when I do get them finished and all the samples worked up, I will put out a call for test crocheters. I haven't had a test crochet in a while on my Instagram. So if you are a crocheter and want to test crochet, then um, make sure you're following me at Nitty Natty so that you can watch out for the tester call. But so what do you guys think? Should I put, um, should I make it so that it comes just a teensy bit up? Should I do some different edgings? 
Should I try ribbing? What other stitch pattern would you like to see? Let me know, help me design, <laughs> because of course I wanna create designs that um, you guys are going to like and use. So let me know what you think. So there you go, hopefully that made up for the fact that I don't have many whips to show you by showing you a little bit of design. Okay, now I'm gonna go into the Ravelry thread and see what kinds of questions we have. I think we've got two questions for this week. So if you have any questions for me, definitely um, put them in the Ravelry group. It's Love and Stitches and the thread is called Ask Me. Okay, so this one is from, I think you say it, Clow maybe, or Clo8088. Hi Natalie, I'm curious. Why do you prefer one ply yarn? Also, does it pill, pill <laughs> more easily than multi-ply yarn? Thank you, Sherry. Okay, Sherry, so let's talk about one ply or single ply yarn. I think I have some here. Where is it? Do, 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 do. Oh, here it is. I've put it down here in a basket. Okay, so this is single ply or one ply yarn. Basically, it is one single strand of fiber that is loosely twisted rather than multiple strands of yarn that are twisted together. So that is what a ply is, if you weren't familiar. I love single ply yarn. I wouldn't say that I prefer it. I think what I use most of the time is a four ply sock yarn, more like up here. I've got four plies and two plies. Um, so I wouldn't say that I prefer it, but I do really like it. And the reason that I like it is that it just creates a very soft and, um, what's the right word, drapey fabric. I really also like it in crochet. I think it does the same thing. It makes the fabric just really soft and um, just makes the whole thing flow. I make a lot of shawls, so that really is like the aesthetic that I'm leaning towards. Um, I will say that yes, it does, it can pill more than plied yarns because like the fuzziness, I guess I don't know the exact science behind it, but basically like the fluff is not as contained or twisted and so it comes off easier. So I've never made a garment in single ply yarn, but I've heard that that can be tricky because you, you know, obviously in a garment like you saw in this sweater here, like I've got pills galore, that's from the mohair, um, but like there's spots that are just always rubbing and single ply is gonna pill probably worse than applied yarn. So you just have to take that into account. I wouldn't use single ply yarn for socks because they get a lot of wear, unless you're just going to like kick up your feet and like never really walk in them, um, or you just don't mind if they wear holes or get plies, pl uh, pills. I don't know why I can't say pill. Like, like the difference between pill and pell and pale, I don't know, it's hard for me to say. I think it's just from growing up like where I did. <laughs> but anyway, so I hope that answers your question. I wouldn't say my preference is single ply, but I do really like single ply um, yarn a lot. I think it has a lot of great properties. Okay, this is the last question, but it is a good one. This is from Chateau Willow, who is my friend Rebecca, and she asked a really good question. I think that this question is so much fun, and so I am inviting you to answer it as well. So if you have your answer to this question, make sure you put it down in the comments. I cannot wait to see what you guys come up with. Okay, here's her question. What things would you include in a retreat? What is more important? Food, location, goodie bag, attendees, instructors. Ah. Okay, so if you have never been before. There are knitting and crochet, combined knitting and crocheting, yarn, retreats and festivals like all over the country, um, I guess all over the world. And they're so much fun. <laughs> um, so if you've never been, or even if you have been, let me know in the comments what would be like your ideal retreat, what's important to you, what are some amazing experiences that you have had? Because I definitely wanna hear from you. Okay. What things would I include in a retreat? So I really like, well, I've only been on a handful, so I guess I can talk about my experience so far. Um, so I have been to, uh, I went to a local retreat in Fort Worth, which is really close to Dallas for two years, and that was a lot of fun. Um, and then I've been to a 
also kind of local but a little further away retreat outside of Austin, Texas, about three hours from me for the last two years. So I've only really been to two retreats. And then I've been to uh, some fiber festivals, DFW Fiber Fest, which is held here. Um, and then where else have I been? I haven't been, I've never traveled to like a big fiber festival. I've also done some yarn crawls. So I have a, a little bit of experience, I guess, but never, I've never traveled to a retreat, which is something that I definitely want to do once it's safe to travel again, of course. Um, so for me, what I really like in a retreat is a combination of like learning and relaxing. So out of your list, let's see, food, location, goodie bag, attendees, instructors. Okay, so I think one of the most important things is actually the location <laughs> um, and that just being like, is it easy to travel to? Because I like going to the retreat in Austin because I can drive and that saves money, of course. And it just makes it a little easier, you know, taking less time off from work um, and so on. And then the other factor of location is like, is it at a hotel or is it at a resort or where it is? So it is really fun to um, kind of have like a nice, like a nicer hotel or like a nice resort so that when you are hanging out with other people that you meet at the retreat, then you have like a great space to go and hang out. So for me, the location has to be like, it doesn't have to be fancy necessarily, but I like it to be, um, like somewhere where I can go and I don't have to go anywhere else. Like I can stay at the hotel or I can stay at the resort location because I don't know, I just wanna go for the knitting, I guess. I don't need to have like other touristy things going on. There's usually enough going on at the retreat. So lots of spaces to, or designated spaces to hang out with other people because sometimes you go to these retreats alone. Um, I've definitely been alone in the past and I, if I didn't have it, if there wasn't a designated space to meet other knitters, then I might have been hanging out by myself in the hotel room, which is not fun. So a designated space where people can gather, that's always really, really good as far as location. Um, I think second is definitely the instructors because sometimes that's what makes you like want to go to a place. So it's really fun to have like big name instructors. Um, I think that's a lot of fun. And then of course the classes have to be things that you would be interested in taking. A lot of times for me, I like taking classes because of who the instructor is more than what the class is on because a lot of times like there aren't either, like at this point since I've been knitting for a long time, there are techniques that I don't know because I don't really want to learn any more about them. I know that sounds kind of bad, but like spinning, like I don't want to take a spinning class because right now I'm not interested in spinning and so on. So sometimes I'll just take a class because I want to hear more from the instructor and I always learn something from them. Sometimes it's the subject about the subject that the class is on, but a lot of times it's not. You just like pick up on amazing things from um, experienced instructors. So I think instructors and classes are definitely like the second most important thing for me to location. Um, the attendees, I don't know if we can control that. That's a little bit hard. I mean, I think that I, I like going to something that's relatively small because you actually get to know people. Um, Rebecca, who asked this question, we have gone to the retreat together the last two years. And that's like, you know, we have one friend that we know and then we make new friends and it's a lot of fun. So I really enjoy that aspect. And then the food, I, I guess I've never been somewhere that has like really bad food. I like the food that the food is included um, because then you don't have to go anywhere. You already have food like budgeted in so that you can really just focus on like if you want to purchase yarn and stuff there. Um, so as long as the food is like decent, I don't really, I don't really care if it's not like fancy or anything like that. Um, and then the goodie bag, to me, that's the least important thing. I know lots of people really, really want that amazing goodie bag. Um, when we went to the Knitting in the Hills retreat in Austin this past March, like early March, right before everything went crazy, um, we got an amazing goodie bag. But if you watched, um, I'll make sure to link my Knitting in the Hills retreat video. Um, I actually gave away almost everything in that bag because 
I'm really focused on minimizing my stash and uh, some of the things that were in there I just knew I wasn't gonna use. And so I passed them on, did a giveaway so that some other, another knitter can use that. So for me, the goodie bag, I, like it's great. I will look through it, but I don't always um, keep what's in there. I'd rather, I guess I'd rather like buy things if, when I want them. I don't know, that's just me. So you guys let me know what is in your ideal retreat, what kinds of things are important to you because I don't know, it's just fun. That's a fun, uh, that's a really fun question, Rebecca. I loved that one. All right, let's do some news. So videos, I have a new video and actually <laughs> it's premiering in 15 minutes. So I need to make sure that I am done recording and up in my computer in 15 minutes, um, which is perfect. This should be plenty of time. So um, my new video this week was a design with me. So it was kind of, it's kind of a combo like, day in the life slash week in the life because two weeks ago I took some time off from doing videos in order to design. So you've seen a few of them because you've seen the skinny can cozy and the crocheted yarn cozies, but I have a couple other things in there. Plus it really takes you through like the process of like kind of how I design, which is like a little chaotic. I wouldn't say it's like a, a process per se. But that video is new this week, so I'll make sure to link that. It was a lot of fun to film, and I really liked doing a design week, so I think I'm gonna have to do that um, leading into every season. So I might have another one coming up in the fall. Um, also, there is going to be a live video this weekend on YouTube, probably Saturday. I have not set a time yet, um, but make sure you are following on Instagram so that you can see when that live is going to be. And then um, I have a design that is coming out next week. I can't believe it that next week is gonna be July already, it's crazy. So the Skinny Can Cozy, this is the um, regular, I guess the original version, the Skinny Can Cozy, and then the Self Striping Skinny Can Cozy, they are one pattern, they will come together. That is coming out next week along with the self-striping versions of the classic can and the classic bottle cozy. Um, so that pattern will be coming out on Thursday. Usually I do pattern releases on Fridays, but because it's a holiday weekend here in the United States, I decided I'm going to do it on Thursday. Um, so if you would like the opportunity to win a copy of that pattern, um, make sure you are looking for my love letter video next week, probably on Tuesday. I am going to do what I've done for the past couple of designs and do a little giveaway on that video. So make sure you're looking out for details on that. Okay, here's what's going on in my life right now. I don't know if you can tell, but the shelf behind me looks different. Can you tell from last week? <laughs> I did talk about that I am organizing my yarn room and that is gonna be another video coming up soon, but it's gonna be a few weeks because I have some other stuff that needs to come out first. Um, but I have been continuing to work on not only my yarn room, but also the rest of my house. And I have been taking trips to Goodwill. They just have like these drop like baskets, carts outside and you just put your stuff in there, no contact, it's great. Um, and I've also been selling furniture. So I had some excess furniture and some furniture I wanted to replace actually here in my yarn room. I won't tell you exactly what yet, um, but I have been selling it and I'm like addicted. <laughs> so I've been selling it on Nextdoor, which is just an app or a website that you can like connect with your neighbors and your like surrounding neighborhoods. And so I've been posting stuff on there and selling it. Actually yesterday I was cleaning out a closet and I have a ton of nail polish. And so I like sorted through and got rid of like 30 bottles of nail polish. And I was about to put them in the trash and I was like, you know, I just, one, I'm not sure if this can go in the trash or if it's supposed to, but I was like, you know, I really wish I could just give this to somebody like if I knew someone who had a daughter that just like likes to play with nail polish. Um, when I was uh, a few years ago, I did the same thing and got rid of a bunch of nail polish. I have an addiction <laughs> um, and I was able to bring it to school and give it to my students because you know I, I teach elementary school and so that was perfect. But I didn't have anyone to give it to so I just took a quick picture, put it on next door like for free 
and several people messaged me they're like oh I have a daughter that would love that and so somebody came by picked it up and now their cute little four-year-old has tons of nail polish to play with so I love next door I'm obsessed with it in the last week so I've been selling furniture I've been giving stuff away on there it's been a lot of fun so yeah I've just been continuing my insane declutter of my house because I'm just you know it's a good summer project for when I don't have to worry about work but I can just focus on getting our house into a really good place um okay I think oh we are so good on time this is a short episode I uh yeah that's what happens when I have secrets <laughs> um but promise there is so much more coming um but bringing me joy i have started to uh journal every night and that has been really great i used to do it a lot more like before i got married i was a huge journaler i would write a lot i did all i just did a ton of stuff and i guess just in the busyness of life i've stopped doing that i always read at night for about like 10 minutes before i fall asleep probably five minutes um but i decided last week that i would start trying to journal again and that has been really really good so all i do is i have four or five things that i write about i write about my goals for the next day because it helps to just get them out of my head and then it's also fun to look at it look at the day before like the next night I look at the previous day and see if I actually did those things. So I write down my goals for the next day. I write down any bad spots in the day, any bright spots in the day, any uh, prayers and gratitude. And that's just been super good for me. So that's five things, right? Goals, bad spots, bright spots, prayers and gratitude. Yeah, it's just been really great to kind of like synthesize at the end of every day what's been going on. It takes me like five minutes. I don't even write it that pretty. Like if I ever want to go back and look, I'm not going to be able to read my own handwriting. It's terrible, but I just write it and get it all out of my head. And then I read my Harry Potter book and fall asleep. <laughs> so that has been really, really great. So there you go. That's what's been going on this week. Tons and tons of cozy knitting, lots of decluttering, uh, not much work on my whips. I've got to work on Lillian this week. Please hold me to it. And again, hopefully I will have even more next week. So make sure you're watching on Instagram for when that live video is going to be coming. And I will see you guys next week. Bye.